Hey guys, wasn't planning on uh, doing this message, but I'm going to. Um, it was just kind of like, okay, Lord, kind of just presented itself to, my, to me. But read my title this, My Burden is Light. About a few days ago, I was, maybe a week ago, I was just praying, and the Lord said, Travel light. I'm like, okay. Kind of started thinking about it, praying about it, talking to him about it. A few days. Travel light so you can win the fight. And I thought, okay. Several things started coming up. Then some scriptures too, and that was one of them. Just came up actually not too long ago, a few minutes ago. Um, it, well, I was just sitting here praying. We're being weighed down, guys, by the cares of this life and the world. And I'm not neglecting and saying we shouldn't, you know, have the tenacity and the hard work ethics and all the, you know, the, there's some good qualities and all that. That's not what I'm saying. We shouldn't neglect things. But as men, we want a plan, a backup plan. And the backup plan and the backup plan. When I was an executive with a big company, that's what I, you know, I was like, man, I had plans, backup plans, backup plan, and the backup plans. It's always successful. It's always, you know, it didn't matter if something broke, got, didn't get taken care of, whatever. There was always something else in the works. A lot of stuff kind of ran itself once I got everything in place. A lot of things in place took, took time and it's about even a year or two. Um, but, you know, there it was. But it worked a lot. But this is what came up. You know, the light part. What did he tell him? He said, go into all the world. But he also said, when you go, don't take any thought. Take two shoes. Don't take an extra pair of anything. Well, that's not a very good plan. When you go on a trip, you got suitcases, you got other things. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. So this was the second piece. And I'm gonna go into a really brief, short story of some things that just happened in my life that got me to this stage. I'm thinking about the light. Because I haven't been doing it light. I've been doing it hard. And it's become hard. Because of it. So I kind of missed the mark a little bit here. But this was the second piece. It was in the natural. It was years ago. Watching it. I liked, used to like to watch the History Channel about all the different things and, and the wars and stuff. But I'm sure they still do it today. And I, I know the Navy SEALs, I'm sure, do it. Probably the regular army even does it. But there was these Green Berets. They were going on a mission. <clears throat> I think it was the Green Berets, but it was a long time ago. But anyhow, it was some very experienced soldiers. And they were getting prepared to go into battle and they were on a, you know, just come back from one. <clears throat> they would lay out everything. They were counting up the weight the bullets versus the water versus the food versus the, how long the mission was, and all the things that, you know, they had to think, think, think things through. But they were trying to travel light. It's only going to be like a three day mission. What do they need to take to be successful in the mission, but not overtake things? You know, because everything weighs up. They could only, the backpack could only hold 90 pounds or whatever they hold that they can haul around on their back <clears throat> and fit in there and, you know, still, I mean, so that got me to thinking. They're preparing for the battle, but they're traveling light. Okay, let's put that into the Christian perspective. That thinking things through, it's not up here, guys. It's not our plan. It's not what we can make up. That's where the church world is. Most of it, honestly, I'm just being brutally honest with you. 
they got their own plans and agendas and ways to, to get to God, whether it's through vain babbling and music or just whatever, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. What about prayer? You want some clarity in your life? Pray. So we're getting the world, the enemy is wearing us out, guys, with these weights. Facebook, it's like, honestly, it's like the rage of the society. I'm, you know, I'm doing it only because he told me to. I don't like it at all. And yeah, do I sometimes miss it? Yes, of course. <laughs> miss the mark, but, but it's, man, it's just like, I can feel the burden. So, are you traveling light to win the fight? Are we getting caught up in all these latest and greatest prophecies? And some of them, some of them are okay, and some of them are a little hokey, guys. Honestly, when I get some, I get some visions and dreams, and I say some things that kind of seem a little bit maybe out there to some people. But you know where they came from? They were birthed in prayer, sitting right there behind me, alone in that chair behind me, to the, just to, by that column, actually right there. Well, that's my wife's chair, it's the other one, that one. That's my prayer spot. That window there that you can see, the way that the frame is made in there, inside of there, especially at night from the neighbor's house, from the lights, you can see the shadow of the cross. And as I'm praying, I'm reminded of that scripture, he that abideth under the wings, shadows of the Almighty. So it's a special place, guys. But I'm saying that, I'm sure many of you all have too, but I'm, what I'm saying is, you better start praying things through. And I'm gonna end with this because I want to keep these short because I mean my videos been being are being being too long and I want to shorten them. But it's time to travel light so we can win this fight. And we've got too many things going on, and that's the enemy's ploy to destroy us. <laughs> I was doing some things. I'm not going to share the details with you maybe one day, but just not today. But, and the Lord told me to give away 90%, keep 10. And he was, uh, his eyes were going to be upon it and bless it. And I have, for the most part, maybe almost 100% done that. But I was starting to get to where I was doing a lot of it myself. And it lost me, it was becoming physical. And it was like wearing me out because I'm kind of in a battle of some health issues. And so it was just, instead of turning it over to the Lord and praying about it, you know, it started out a little bit at a time, but it started drifting off. I didn't deviate from the 90% and keeping the 10, that wasn't the issue. It was, I tried to do too much that I wasn't supposed to do because I wasn't traveling light. This is the other piece of that story, but, um, so let me interject this because it is important. Because the deviation, it's what the enemy's doing with the distractions, whether it's political, your business, the, the, all the pandemonium over all these, you know, stuff. You know what I'm talking about exactly, you know, because the reason why I'm not saying too much about it is because, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be censored over it. I want to get these messages out. You know exactly what I'm talking about, guys, all the issues that we're facing, but they're wearing us out because sometimes we're taking those on. They may not be our fight. So you need to pray about it. I'm not saying abscond from the responsibilities or any of that or not do what you're supposed to do diligently, prudently, with intention, and all those, those are all good things and good qualities. But you gotta make sure that's what God wants you to do, and you're doing it right. So 
You can win the fight. You can travel in light. So you're not burdened down with the cares of this life. I was getting burdened down with them, of the mechanics of it. Not the spirit that was behind it, not what the Lord wanted me to do, but the mechanics of it. But this is what the enemy's doing. This is part of the message. Showed me maybe six months ago, and there was a big ocean. Couldn't see anything, no land. On the middle of it was an island. And there was a cross in the middle of the island. Jesus, in the middle of the island, in the middle of the ocean. He was motioning us to come on, come to him. And that's what he told me. I, I, don't, I don't know why. You know how the earth has, what do they call them, the parallels, the lines? You know, it, uh, horizontal lines. <clears throat> he said, stay in the hundredth parallel and you'll get to the island. But instead, the enemy's like, okay, yeah, well, you can go the hundredth parallel, but hundredth parallel, point zero zero five. Just a little bit. You'll be fine. A little bit of deviation. No, because when you travel on that thousand, two thousand, three thousand miles, however far out it is, was from the out from where you were at to, the, to get to this island, you'll miss it. You wouldn't see it. I'm like, okay. Well, that, you know, kind of seems like nonsense a little bit, maybe, you know, because it's pretty natural. A little bit spoiled the whole lump. A little bit, those little foxes spoil the vine. A little bit of error, a little bit of lying, a little bit of deceit, a little bit of cheating, a little bit of whatever, a little bit of sin that we're letting in. And I, and I wasn't sin, and I wasn't saying that to say I was sinning, but yet I was because I wasn't asking God and praying. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word, and running it by them as much as I needed to. And He wants us to do it in everything, whether you walk out the door and whether you go to decide which store to go to, what's called the left, go to the right, stay, don't, stay home with your wife, whatever. Go to work, get a different job, move, whatever the case might be. Big and little decisions. <clears throat> So, so then to say this, what I was doing was pushing myself too hard physically. Not necessarily a consequence as much as a reality, but it's becoming a message because that's how God works in my life anyhow. I, I learned from this. I learned a valuable lesson in this because what happened was I pushed myself so hard physically I have some diabetic issues, okay? Since 94. And I wasn't taking care of it as much as I needed to. And so I ended up with, a, not on purpose, but a little bit of an ulcer about my tongue when I didn't see it. Well, and finally, you know, it hurt, so this time I caught it. Well, I did the same thing last year. And they ended up having to cut a little bit of my toe off, but really, my whole leg was really, really red. Chili pepper hot red all the way up to my thigh. And the first doctor wards were like, man, why does they cut your you know, toe and probably part of your foot off, honestly. They never stopped. Told them no, get rid of the infection first. Three weeks. And I had doctors coming in the room yelling at me that I was gonna die, and, and, and maybe even rightfully so, honestly, because it looked pretty bad. They didn't get rid of the infection after three weeks and just a little piece of my dog had to be removed. This year, and I'm still fighting that right now, same thing. Well, I went to the doctor, everything was okay, but go see a wound specialist. I went to him, went to the, you know, finally got to them, but, Went to the, back to the doctor three times, antibiotics, this and that, started getting infected. By then it was, you know, it spread pretty bad, fast, quick. Well, it was because I was on my feet too much and pushing. 
and doing things that I shouldn't have been doing for 10, 12 hours a day sometimes. Because I was trying to do it in my home and I wasn't traveling light and I wasn't doing things right. Not sinning, but I wasn't doing things right because I wasn't bringing it to the Lord in prayer. What do I do, God? I'm trusting him, guys. I had my own plan and my own vision and my own things. And Okay, God, show me to do this, and he did. And, I, and, it, and a lot of it's been transpiring and working real well. But as soon as I started taking over the helm a little bit, that's where it got me. So right now, and it's, you know, in the hospital, and, and they, they, they wouldn't, they did for about a week, but then they took me off of the medication I really needed, the IVs. And I've been fighting with them since. About to get it back on track, but it's been, man, it's been arduous. And it hurts a little bit, honestly. And it's, it's not good. The first surgeon, all the surgeons were like, cut off one big toe and a little toe, and one was five toes. And it's like, why five? The other three look, you know, nothing wrong with them. I'm like, no. If you're gonna cut, at least get rid of the infection first. <laughs> so, I'm not done yet, and I haven't cut anything yet. But it's still infected, and it still hurts, and it's not as bad as it was, but it's not good either. So, I'm in the process of it. It just, you know, it was like obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. Get to, to get to this, hey, just get, help me get rid of this infection and get me back on the IVs. My insurance even would have approved it. But for some reason, I'm just having obstacle after obstacle with doctors and hospitals. It's like, okay, Lord. So, I learned something from this. Maybe I'm a little hard headed, but this message about traveling light so we could win the fight. It wasn't that I, you know, was deliberately doing anything or trying to do any sin. I really wasn't. I, there was nothing devious in what I was doing or anything. No lies, no nothing, really. And I wasn't my father's will. I wasn't about my father's business. But I started putting Stevie's business in there and thinking I could do it maybe a little bit better. I just did a little bit, you know, harder or whatever. Not. Oh, I still end up, I mean, what he's showing me to do, I'm still spending about the same amount of time, honestly, but just in a lot of different areas. And it's becoming easier. Things are starting to open up in it. And things that kind of got haywire over it, because of my decisions too, and my hard-headedness, and this, you know, all this, it did create some issues and some problems. Slowly working them out. Because he's teaching me to have faith and trust in him, even in a deeper, greater way. But he's doing it so that we can travel light. So all this other stuff that is going on, guys, yes, it's important to an extent. But let me end with this. Because, I, I mean, military can take, you know, you can go down the political road, you can go down the military can take over, you can go down the, you know, and it is coming down to, you know, the rubber meets the road messages. I'm not discounting any of that. Man, we are probably in the end times. Really, really close. Very, very quite possibly. But... He wants us to travel light so we can win the fight and not be burdened down with the cares of this life. I'm gonna end with this, guys. I'm not, that's why I'm not so so keen on, on Facebook and all this other junk that's going on out there because it can bog you down and get you deviated with the wrong, you just your mind crazy over stuff. I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories, guys. 
I'm not saying that this, so don't get me wrong, but you know, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK, whether the, we landed on the moon because of flag blowing in the wind. Pick one, keep going on, you know, the political, the, all this mess. Yes, I would like to know some of those, but does it really, really matter? And the spiritual aspect of it, Yes, it does some in the natural, and we're going through a lot of stuff, but I've also said this. What are you going to do? I said this a year ago. Not quite a year ago, six months ago, whenever. You know what happened. I said, what are we going to do? What are you guys going to do when gas hits 10 bucks a gallon? You better learn to trust in Jesus, because everybody wanted a certain political, they wanted a certain president because cheap gas or whatever, you know. Okay, well, great, awesome. And I really pray for the people because there's people that really needed that. Some people that have two jobs, barely making it. You know, that's a big, big deal to a lot of people. I'm not discounting that at all because some people are getting hurt over it. So pray for it. But you better trust Jesus. Pray about it. That you'll find the 10 bucks that you need or the extra 10, 20 bucks or whatever to, to get that extra gas to get to where you're trying to go, whether it's work, home, whatever. Your trust better be in him. We all learn to travel like guys. Count up every bullet, every piece of ammunition, everything of food, every decision that we make. So, and I'm gonna end with this. I'm gonna open this up, because at first I thought it was an attitude. I really did. And it kind of is, the website is. You can see it, it's on Facebook. I'm not gonna name it because some of it's pretty political, but the shirt isn't. <laughs> because at first I thought, well, you know, but then I thought, no, it's not. It's in, I believe it's in Jeremiah about the lion too. And it's in Revelation. He's the lion from the tribe of Judah. And it's also in, I think Revelation or Jeremiah 30. But here it is. Your first mistake was that you thought I was one of the sheep. We're all supposed to be that, guys. That lion. From the tribe of Judah. Without an attitude. Because even in the scripture, it says that he thought not robbery to be equal with God, but took on the form of a servant, a bond servant, even unto death. That's the king of kings, guys. He died for our sins. He didn't have to. He's hanging on the cross, knowing he could call down legions of angels to stop, to wipe out, stop everybody. Pretty much dead in their tracks. Didn't have to do it. <clears throat> knew who he, don't you think he knew who he was? Of course he did. But <clears throat> back to the same, to say what I'm saying, travel light so we can win this fight. Quit picking up all this stuff. That's why the news is not good to watch at all. I get it. Some people are like, well, you won't know what's going on. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you will. Plenty of people say stuff and you hear stuff and you can watch, you know, you can pick up pieces of it off, you know, but, but be careful what you pick up and pray about it. Don't just pick it up to watch. To try to act like, oh, I'm, you know, a big boy and I can discern and I can tell and I need to know the difference. Do you really? Do you even pray about it? Or are you just doing it because you want to? What I'm saying about the light, guys, he said, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. So, let's do that. Let's, so, I guess really my whole, just this point also, is not just to travel light, but it's to pray about everything you do and pray again.
and pray again. I heard this one guy say, you know, I don't pray a thousand dollars, you know, to the A, get your answer or make sure there's things that I pray about. Sometimes I've had some messages that I prayed about one for two years told a few people about it, but I didn't tell them the whole just of it, and they didn't even say what God told me in a dream. Man, that was exciting, and I wanted to, and God spoke to me in a dream. More than once, bunches of them, but this one particular one, one issue, I just had to pray about it. Finally, I did. It's out there. It's on YouTube now. But, so, just bring it to the Lord. In prayer, are you supposed to be on Facebook? Are you supposed to be starting a ministry? Are you supposed to be helping feed the poor? Are you supposed to be doing something else? Are you supposed to be taking care of your family? What, whatever it is, guys. That's the intentionality you need to have. Lord, what do I do? That's one of my favorite things to do now, sitting in that chair. Jesus, what would you do? So, anyhow, love you guys. Try not to make this video long. It's just, man, I'm, I really am trying. It just doesn't ever seem to work that way. So, love you guys. But travel light so we can win this fight. Quit picking up battles that may not even be yours. If they are yours, then pick up your sword and fight well. But if it's not, move on. And do what the Lord's telling you to do, not what Stevie's telling you to do, or another preacher, or yourself, really. Yourself is the worst one. So I gotta worry about what Stevie's telling Stevie to do. Steve, that's me. If you haven't got that. Love you guys. Um, talk to you soon.